Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of 3D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanas. In the last episode we took care of melee, so being able to swing your rifle from your shoulder and strike something in front of you. Uh, we used uh, animation techniques to create uh, additive blend layers that allow you to both walk and swing and jump and swing and etc etc. Uh, in today's episode what we'd like to take a look at is um, a another method of, of creating um, a, a bullet. Uh, in the past we talked about I talked about a ray cast and using that to make a special effect which was, was creating this line that looks like a bullet. And some of you are suggesting that you have other things you'd like to do. Uh, um, you know, other things, not necessarily a bullet. So in today's episode, guys, we're going to take a look at creating an object uh, that can be used as a projectile. All right, let's get started. Okay, so what I'd like to create in today's episode is a fireball. So if you've got yourself a wizard game or you've got anything like that, then you'll be able to use this fireball technique to create projectiles uh, for what you're, whatever you want to build. Uh, it works very, very similarly in concept anyway to, well, not really. <laughs> uh, it's actually an entirely different concept. It's an entirely different line of thinking from the ray cast that we, that we originally created in order to have something shoot. Uh, and the way we set up our weapon here, uh, we set it up so that our gun muzzle, if we take a look, let's go into our gun muzzle. Let's open up our, shoulder, our soldier uh, and our master and way down here in our gun muzzle uh, we had our fire bullet script uh, and what we could do if we wanted to instead of having a fire bullet script let's take a look at it. Let's double click on it and we'll take a look at our fire bullet and let's shrink it and bring it back. Uh, if we take a look at our fire bullet script, um, basically what we do is we have a time between bullets and that's great, nothing's going to change there, but we have a projectile and basically what we've done here is we, we have any projectile we want. So we can swap out projectiles and create a brand new uh, weapon of some kind. So that's what we're going to do today. We're not going to change the fire bullet. What we are going to change is in the projectile we created previously, let's look at our prefabs, uh, we created our bullet. And this bullet had a, let's shrink everything here, it had a shoot bullet script. So ultimately what I want to do is create another script like shoot bullet uh, on, a, on its own individual prefab uh, that is going to control a new projectile. All right, and and moving forward with the projectile, we're going to start off right away by creating the projectile. We'll do everything in one episode today, I'm really hoping. <laughs> um, what we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new projectile. So let's go on over here first of all. And I'm just going to say, let's close this up for now because I don't want to see all this extra stuff. Uh, I'm going to say create, and I'm going to create a particle system. Now, the basis behind this uh, concept uh, is a, a particle system. And this particle system is going to basically be a fireball. And I'm going to have several layers. I'm going to have the fireball, I'm going to have the smoke, and on top of all of that, I'm going to have a, a something with a rigid body that we're going to add a force to and cause this thing to move, to move forward. But let's start off right away with designing our special effects. All right, so let's start off with, uh, with a zero and a zero and a zero. Everything is where it should be right now. Everything's at zero, zero, zero. Uh, let's move it over a tiny bit. Now, like I said, this is going to be a fireball. So let's open up our particle system. And right away, we're going to go down here. And we're going to reuse some stuff here. We're going to reuse our, instead of the default particle, we're going to reuse our, our fire that we created a few episodes ago fire material. Alright, that's good. That's our fire material. We're going to reuse this uh, and it's going to work perfectly well for exactly what we want it to do. Um, let's go in and take a look at some of the other things we're going to take a look at here, at some of the other at some of the other variables. Um, first of all, the duration. I want this to be a very fast burning fire, so let's change our duration to 0.5. All right, so it's looping through very quickly. I'm going to leave looping on because obviously I still want it to loop. Uh, no start delay and our start lifetime is going to match uh, at 0.5. It's going to match our duration. So once again here we've got ourselves looping very very quickly. Uh, I don't really want any kind of speed. Or, or if I want a speed I want to be very very small. I kind of want it to be in space. So I can either have it at zero. Let's move it up so we can see it. So we can kind of see it's all happening in the same location here. Um, we can either have it at zero like that or, or if you want to give it a little bit of speed so it's moving in, in, in some direction. Uh, in this case here because we're currently using uh, because we're currently using a, um, a cone, it's going to move upwards. But let's say we want to give it a little bit of speed. Let's give it a start speed of like, of like 0.1. Maybe 0.1 should be fine. Let's see. We're going to actually, let's just change it right now. We're going to change the shape right away from a cone to a sphere. Uh, and that's going to make it happen. That's going to make it happen all around. So it's acting within the sphere itself. And we're going to really shrink this radius down to uh, almost zero, like 0.05. 
Uh, so we got this ball of fire happening here. And and basically, if we, if we take a look at this thing, it's got a little bit of motion, almost none at all. You could pump this up to a little bit. Let's say you wanted a little bit of spart start speed to like uh, 0.2, whatever. Uh, it's going to give you a little bit of, of kind of flame uh, pouring off. I'm going to leave it at 0.1, so there's almost no movement at all. Um, and yeah, that's perfectly fine as far as the sh uh, shape is concerned. I'm, I've got myself a fireball there, and that's what I'm looking for. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the start size. Um, this is a pretty big ball. Let's make it about half the size, 0.5. Uh, so we've got ourselves a little tiny ball of flame. That looks good. Uh, I'm not going to change. Uh, I'm not going to change the color or the gravity. Uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but for now, let's say our start rotation. Um, let's give it. Uh, let's give it a rotation um, between two angles. So we're we're kind of getting it burned out between two constants. So between minus 45 and 45. Oops, 45. Clicking everything there. Um, that way we're kind of getting this, this, this again, roiling ball of flame. So that looks pretty good. Uh, last thing I'm going to change, right now if I drag this around, you can see that my simulation space is still local. I want to make sure it's world, and that's going to give me a line of effect, all right? A line of effect. Kind of making a trail of fire behind me. Uh, let's talk about the emission. Uh, the emissions currently, let's see what the emission is. The emission's 10. Let's make it a little higher, because when I dragged it there, when I drag it, I'm kind of leaving some space. Let's make it 20 and see how that looks. 20, and see if that gives me a little, that gives me a better line. All right, so that's a, a few more, and that's giving me a little bit better line. Okay, so right now, uh, that is all right. Let's change our color over lifetime so we have it fade out. Let's close this and close this. And our color over lifetime. Uh, let's put a fade into it. I always like to put a fade in. Uh, let's make the alpha over lifetime zero so it fades out towards the end of its life. I always like to do that. I, I prefer that to just having it snap off. Uh, I don't know why. I just do. Uh, and that's it. I think that's all I really need to do uh, for this fireball, for the actual fireball effect. That's that's probably fine for now. We'll take a look at this a little bit more in a little bit. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to rename it, first of all, to fireball. Let's call it uh, fire ball PS, all right, for particle system. Now, this particle system, uh, how I want this thing to work is, is I want this particle system uh, to, I want this particle system to um, be attached to an, a parent. So let me say create and create empty. And um, I'm going to call this empty game object uh, fire ball projectile. Uh, and this is what I'm actually going to have um, a fair amount of the code on uh, that makes it move. Uh, I really want this thing here to be to be launched. Uh, I don't want what I want to happen is I want this object to fly out of my my weapon, this fireball to fly out of my weapon, uh, and I I want it to crash into something. Now, ultimately on this on this fireball right here on the original fireball uh, that I created. I'm going to add a number of things. I'm going to add a. I'm going to add a collider. Uh, I'm going to add a sphere collider, and I'll just add it right now. Let me, let me shrink this. Instead of just talking about it, I'm going to add it right now. I'm going to add a component onto the original fireball, the fireball PS. I'm going to add a physics, uh, a sphere collider like that, and that's a little bit too big. I'm going to shrink it down. Mm, so it's about the same size as my actual fireball, somewhere around there. 0.15 is perfectly fine. Uh, and what I want to do is, it, it looks like it's centered okay. Uh, that's probably fine. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this into a trigger. And when this when this object is flying forward, having this collider be a trigger means that I have three options for code. When this object intersects another uh, collider, so on enter. Uh, when this collider leaves another collider, so on exit, or when this collider stays within another collider, uh, then I can I can launch some kind of code. And I'm obviously going to use that kind of code uh, later on to create damage of some kind. All right. So for now, I'm going to leave it like that. Now, uh, later on, we're going to add an additional thing down here. But for now, that collider is what I want. Now, when this collider actually hits something, I want to destroy the fireball. The fireball itself is going to be destroyed once I hit another object. But I also want it to leave behind a smoke trail and, and stuff like that. So I don't want to completely destroy this object and just you know, destroy the entire thing and, and add and add our damage. I want I want some of the smoke effects and that kind of stuff to remain available uh, to this to the 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 game itself, right? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this this top layer, this fire projectile, uh, and I'm going to take this thing here and I'm going to drag it and drop it on top. So now it's within. Uh, and I'm going to take this guy here, I'm going to zero this out, I'm going to make it zero, 
I'm going to make it 0, and I'm going to make it 0. Uh, and that way, and let me put this other one at y equals 0 and z equals 0. And I'll move it up a little bit. Uh, why is my fire? Oh, because I'm clicked off of it. All right, there we go. Um, so yeah, I, I basically want this thing here, uh, this top layer. Uh, what I want this top layer to do is I want this top layer uh, to, I want this top layer to be in control of causing this projectile to move forward. And we're going to move this projectile forward using a rigid body. So the first thing I'm going to add to it right away is I'm going to add component. I'm going to add a physics, and I'm going to add a rigid body. And the I'm going to add a little bit of drag to the rigid body. It'll slow down over time, so let's give it 0.1. Uh, I'm not going to worry about angular. I'm just going to leave everything else like that. Uh, I'm not going to use gravity. I'm going to turn off use gravity. And and that's really uh, your choice. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to turn off use gravity, and I'm going to I'm going to have it a slower force. So this thing's not going to fall down over time, but I'm still going to apply forces to it. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add one more thing to this. I'm going to add an existing script. Script. I'm going to add my destroy me script. And the destroy me script, let's, let's destroy it in, let's say, 3.5 seconds. We'll adjust that later on. So basically right now, if I hit play, uh, this object will, will burn for three and a half seconds, and then the entire thing will be destroyed. And that's fine. So that three and a half seconds uh, gives my object time to get off the screen. And that's really what I, why I put that destroy me on there, uh, and that's great. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to add we're going to add uh, a couple of scripts. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's let's do this right now. Let's add our smoke in here. Let's grab our smoke. We're going to add it to this thing. And I'm going to drag it. I'm going to drop it on there. Uh, and the smoke itself, we can either go upwards like this with the smoke. Um, how you want to add the smoke is going to be is going to be up to you. Um, let me see if I adjust this. 70. How you add the smoke is going to be really up to you. Let's say I get rid of this negative 90. Zero it out. Uh, zero this out and zero this out. So my smoke is also in place. And I want it to kind of follow behind. Uh, but let's see. Let's see how this works out. It's probably going the wrong way, but I'll adjust it later on. So I'm adding in smoke there as well. So the smoke itself over time, when I drag this whole thing around, uh, when I drag this entire thing around, it's going to leave behind a trail. It's not going to work here, unfortunately. Uh, let's do this. Maximize and play. Turn it off. Play. And when I drag this around, it's going to leave. It's going to leave a smoke trail. You can see how my smoke's being left behind as well. Uh, so that's great. Now, there's a couple other things that I want to do. Um, I have the option, of course, of adding a light and that kind of thing, which maybe we'll consider in a little bit. We probably should consider it to make sure that it looks really good. Uh, maybe we can add a light to the top level, but later on. Um, for now, guys, let's add. Let's go into our fireball itself, and we're going to add a few different scripts in here, or at least one other script. We're going to add a script in here that controls this fireball. So when it first comes into being, um, we want this fireball to first of all shoot out uh, into space and we want it if it hits something to do damage so I'm gonna I'm gonna go on my fireball I'm gonna say add component and I'm gonna say add new script new script and let's call this um, shoot fireball the same way we discussed we had shoot bullets so we're gonna have shoot fireball and let's let's double click open her up all right and let's get rid of our error and open this up again all right, our shoot fireball script. Now, it's going to be responsible for a number of different things. First of all, it's going to be responsible for causing damage. We want to damage something. And I'm going to say public. So I'm going to add a couple of variables here. Float, uh, and we'll call it damage. Exactly the same way we did previously uh, with our, with our, is our fireball script? No, no, it was our, it was our uh, shoot bullet script. So we're going to have a public float damage. And that's how much damage this thing can do. And now we're going to add a public float. And let's call it speed. And this speed is how fast our actual fireball is going to move forward. Uh, we're going to need a link to our rigid body. Uh, so our rigid body, and we'll call it myRB. It doesn't really matter what you call it. Uh, and that rigid body is going to allow us to apply a force to something, uh, to the actual whole system. Okay. So that's probably all I need. Let's go down to our start. Sorry, I touched the microphone there. Uh, and we'll say my, we're going to define myRB first of all, because we don't actually know what it is yet. MyRB is going to equal get component. And it's not get component, it's going to be get component in parent. Uh, and that's because this script is on the fireball itself, and the fireball is one layer lower than, uh, lower than the actual rigid body that we're applying. So I'm going to add this right here, get component in parent. So it's going to go look in the parent, and it's going to look for, obviously, a rigid body. All right, and that's going to define our rigid body for us. The next thing I'm going to add is an if statement. Now, if 
And the reason, what, what I'm going to do now is, is I have to add a force to this rigid body. That's my plan, is to add a force to the rigid body. And uh, when I add this force, it's going to be either in one direction or the other, depending on which way my character is facing. And this is the same dilemma that we had with the, with the bullet itself. When we made the bullet, we had to know whether or not this character was facing left or right. So here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to check and see if the transform, so when we, we are going to instantiate we're going to instantiate this entire thing, right? We're going to instantiate our our uh, rocket, or excuse me, our we're going to instantiate our fireball, and when we instantiate it, it's going to have a current or an orientation based on how our gun muzzle is going to instantiate it. We already did that. We already checked that out here in Fire Bullet. Um, depending on which way our character is facing, we we bring it in with a rotation, all right? It's right here. We bring it in with a rotation. So depending on how we're rotated, we want to have this thing move in one direction or the other. So first thing we're going to check is, is which direction is moving and then apply a force. So first, if our transform um, dot position, or rotation, excuse me, our rotation, dot rotation, dot y, because that's how we rotated it, either 90 or negative 90. If our rotation is greater than zero, uh, then we are facing in one direction. So we want to add my RB dot, and we're going to add a force. And the force is going to cause this whole thing to move. Let me add a little, let me put a space in here so you can see it better. We're going to add a force, my, uh, a force itself, and it's going to be a vector 3. Uh, and it's going to have the value of, um, sorry, a vector 3 dot uh, right. So if if we are if our rotation is greater than 90 degrees or greater than zero, it's it's 90 degrees, and therefore we are facing to the right. And we want this we want this object to move to the right. Okay, so our vector three is going to have an x value of right, uh, and that's just a short form of saying go right. Um, so it's like uh, yeah, just a short form of saying that, and we're going to multiply that value times um, speed that we defined above, and that's going to give us the entire speed of oops. That's going to give us the speed of this actual and the direction of this actual fireball as a vector three. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to apply this force in the force mode of impulse dot impulse. All right, so all the force can be applied at once. Okay, now if we're not greater than ninety, or if we're not greater than zero, excuse me, then we're less than zero. So we can say else, and once again we can add an RB. Uh, add an RB, and we're going to do it exactly the same. Let me see, copy this, and we're going to paste it, paste it. Uh, and inst we're still going to apply it right, but instead this time we're going to multiply it by negative speed. So it's going in the opposite direction, and once again, we're going to imp we're going to do it as an impulse. All right, and let's file save that. File save. Perfect. So that code actually gets us moving. We actually get moving. That's exactly what we want to do. Now, what happens if this object actually hits something? So there's a couple things we're going to do. We're not going to do it all right now. We're just going to set it up so that it's working uh, for the most part. And once we actually have the ability to damage something, uh, then we'll come back in and have to fix up all this code. So we have a lot of code to fix up. Um, first thing is first, we're going to write a new script, a, a new function, void on trigger enter, on trigger enter. And the on trigger enter takes one collider that we're going to call other, other. Bam, bam, and bam. Okay, so whenever we first enter, whenever our trigger first enters something, we want something to happen. First thing we're going to check is if, uh, let's check and see if it's shootable. All right, so if the other dot game object dot layer uh, is equal to and uh, our layer mask, so our layer mask, uh, our layer mask was shootable, if I remember correctly, layer mask dot name to layer, and our layer name was shootable shootable so if we're hitting something oh it's capital s though we gotta make sure we get it right if we don't get it right it shan't work um shootable and one last one of these and none of those okay that's right um okay so if it's actually shootable we want something to happen all right later on we're going to check and see if it's shootable and it's an enemy uh if it's shootable and an enemy <laughs> then we're going to want something else to happen entirely as well. Uh, but for now, if something is shootable, if we hit something that's shootable, what we want to do is we want to take my RB and we want to set its velocity uh, equal to zero. Oops, equal to zero. Uh, we can't do it like this, can we? No, we have to say vector3. Vector3.0. Uh, boom. Um, so if if it's uh, if we hit something, we want to immediately set the velocity to zero, so this object stops moving. We also want to immediately destroy. Immediately want to destroy this game object. All right. So we're going to destroy this game object. Now, 
when we destroy this game object, it's still going to leave the parent, all right? And the parent itself is the is the um, projectile. So this entire thing, the shoot fireball, if we take a look at this down here, if we take a look at the at the hierarchy, um, we have fireball projectile, we have fireball PS, and we have smoke PS. This shoot fireball script is actually on the fireball uh, PS uh, asset. So this destroy, this game object destroy is only going to destroy the fireball PS and it's going to leave behind the smoke and the fireball projectile. All right, awesome. So let me just save this. File save. And that's all we really need to do. This is going to take care of everything we really need to do for now. Now, right now we're not actually shooting it at all. It doesn't actually go anywhere or do anything. What we want to do is we want to go into our actual soldier uh, open this up and we're gonna go all the way down to our gun muzzle and I'm gonna take this fireball projectile I'm gonna drag it and I'm gonna drop it over not over there let me undo that delete delete I'm gonna grab this fireball check projectile I'm gonna move it into prefabs right here I could have left it right where I had it <laughs> it didn't really matter I just want it all together so now I've got myself a projectile I'm gonna make sure that this is all zeroed position zero and zero uh, for the top layer bam and I'm gonna delete it off here bam all right now we can go into our gun muzzle and before we had this fire bullet script up here all right I don't want this anymore I don't want to use fire bullet I'm gonna turn it off for now and I'm gonna add a component I'm gonna add an existing script oh no what am I saying I'm lying to you don't listen to me <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm going to leave fire bullet on. I'm going to get rid of projectile bullet for now, and instead I'm going to put down in my fireball projectile. All right, great. Now I'm going to save it. File, save. Now when we actually shoot, we should shoot a fireball. At least it would if I didn't actually have an error down below. Uh, so line 27 of this guy. Line 27. If other, okay, double equal sign. Um, the double equal sign is a comparative uh, a comparative option, whereas a single equal sign is an equate. And obviously, in an if statement, we want the comparison, the comparative option. All right, so let me file save that. File save. Let me go back here. Uh, there's a couple more things we have to do in order for this to work. We have to open up our projectile, our our projectile. We have to find our fire our fire PS here. And we have to give it a damage. Let's say we give it 20. It doesn't really matter for now. We're going to change all those values once we actually have an enemy to shoot. We have to give it a speed. Let's try Let's try 5. Uh, and let's save that. File, save. Now, when I hit play, maximize on play is on, good. When I hit play, uh, I should be able to shoot a fireball. Boom. Great, there is my fireball and my smoke gets left behind. Uh, I don't know if I love the way the smoke is working. I might have to take a look at that. It's working one way for this. Uh, and maybe I might have to change it up slightly because the smoke appears very suddenly and I don't know if I love that. Anyway, guys, that is how you'd make a fireball. So that gives you the option to do uh, one of two things. You can either use uh, the original style that we took a look at, which was to actually build a... Uh, to actually build a, a line renderer uh, and I'm gonna put that back for now because now that this is here that's awesome but I'd want my original bullet back so I'm gonna just take this I'm gonna drag it and I'm gonna drop it there so once again I am now firing bullets let me just make sure everything's working perfect all right perfect um, so uh, guys with this working like this, um, this gives you the option to either have a bullet fire the way we did originally uh, using a ray trace, um, or you could have it set up so that uh, so that you are shooting at uh, an op you have an option to shoot something that can be hit uh, with a fireball as well. Um, let me actually go back to that for one second. Gun muzzle. Let's put that fireball back just to make sure. Oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do this. Um, let's put this back for one second just to make sure that I can actually hit something because I didn't check that. Let's go over here and shoot at the rock and make sure. Bam. Okay, it's hitting that. Good. It's the right size. Can it hit this thing? Yeah, it's working. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So now we have the option, guys. <laughs> I keep going back. We have the option to either use the bullet, which I'm going to put back here right now, uh, and the ray trace uh, and the, the line renderer to make ourselves the visual effect for a bullet. Or you can build yourself anything you want, a rocket, a fireball, a freeze ray, anything else you might want to have as far as a particles, as far as a projectile is concerned using this other method, uh, using the, the method of creating a rigid body, uh, adding a force to it, and then having that rigid body, sorry, having that, that actual object be destroyed when it hits something. All right?
both options completely completely they're identical as far as as far as the system's concerned both will allow you to do damage to an enemy all right guys i hope you're putting together some really awesome stuff i can't wait to see your games all right whether you're doing a a shooter like this or you're doing some kind of magic fireball launching guy i can't wait to see whatever you're doing all right hope you enjoyed it if you did let me know with a thumbs up if you didn't like it a thumbs down is perfectly fine just let me know why you didn't like it and i will try and make it better for the next time all right, everyone, thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.